Hey guys, uh, welcome to Canine TV. We had a little bit of a, uh, a technical glitch for some reason. It took a, a snippet to connect, but uh, we're here and we're live. So as I wait for you guys to uh, log in here and say hello, I'm just making sure everything at my end is working okay. So as you guys uh, start to join in, I would love to see uh, some thumbs, thumbs up. Let me know uh, that you're all here. Just bear with me. So as you tune in, uh, let me know. I can see two people are here, which is awesome. Just bear with me. Aha! Thank you. I can see the thumbs up. All right, guys. So tonight uh, we're talking about uh, marking magic and click for tricks. There has been a lot of conversations about uh, the use of clickers, marker words, um, a lot of confusion. We've had a few uh, questions that have come through since we said that we were uh, doing our canine TV on this particular topic tonight. Hey, Paul, good to see you, buddy. Hi, hey, Dick. Um, so uh, basically what I wanted to say first and foremost is at the end of the day, when we talk about marking behaviors or using a click as some people uh, refer it, uh, refer to the training, clicker training, it really depends on the conditioning that you, you implement with your dog. So it comes under what we call classical conditioning. Uh, we hear quite a few debates as to whether we should use a click or a verbal mark. So a verbal mark, the most common one would be yes. And guys, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. I would say that there's not necessarily the right or the wrong way. It's what's going to work best for you and your dog. As long as you're clear and you're consistent and it's been conditioned correctly, then that's exactly what it is that we're after. Hi, Rebecca. Good to see you. Thanks for joining in. So guys, uh, to start off with you, some of you may not know what a clicker is. So I'm going to start right at the very, uh, cover, cover off the very simple basics just briefly. I've got a couple of clickers here. These are most commonly known as the eye clicker. These guys can come in handy. If you didn't know, uh, some of the ways you can use these clickers, as you can see, it protrudes out here. Um, you can actually stick these in your pocket, which works really, really well uh, if you're trying to do a subtle kind of click. Clickers are not remote controls. You don't point them at your dog, guys. Uh, I know that a lot of us are, are conditioned to, uh, you know, when we have a remote, to, to be pointing it at the TV and that type of thing. So, uh, guys, do not point them at your dog. It doesn't help your dog training at all. Um, so a lot of people, and I might just stand up here, they might just tuck it. I don't know if you guys can see, but you can just tuck it into your pocket and press it. You know, so you might just have your hands on your hips and press the click. So they're your eye clickers. Some people love them. Some people prefer the more traditional ones. I can see people uh, tuning in. So hello. <coughs> Excuse me. Here we have a, a box clicker. Okay. So you just make sure you put your, your thumb in there. Nice and simple. A little bit louder than the eye clicker. Um, I know I was having a great conversation with uh, Glenn Cook up in uh, Sydney once. And uh, uh, the bottom line was I prefer this one because it's louder. It might have something to do with my personality. Um... And then we've got these teardrop shaped ones, which are a little bit like the eye clicker, but again, they have that louder sound as well. Guys, at the end of the day, uh, hello from India. Awesome. Thanks for joining in. What time is it uh, over there in India? I'd love to, love to know. Hi from the car, says Renee. Drive carefully. Eyes on the road, my friend. Um, so it really does depend on what your personal preference is. Again, when we talk about classical conditioning, it totally comes down to your dog's perception of it. So personally, myself, I use a verbal mark. So it's just a yes. Um, there are pros and cons to both. And again, it comes down to personal preference. I know that uh, I believe it was Brooke uh, posted up in the comments the other day that a lot of the time, it may have been Lyndall also, that when you're using a clicker, that they end up using a verbal mark as well. I am guilty of that at the majority of times. So basically, I'll just go yes at the same time. Um, I know once uh, there was a video that's actually up on our YouTube channel when I was working with Zuka and I was having him uh, do pirouettes, so walking backwards around me. And I'm so used to using a verbal mark and I was holding the clicker, I actually forgot to press it, um, which uh, you can actually see in the video. I start laughing and I'm like, I forgot I was even holding a clicker. Guys, it doesn't matter. This is the most important thing. It doesn't matter whether you're using a click or you're using a verbal mark, okay, as long as your dog is conditioned to it correctly. Um, so, hi, Ree. Good to see you. Hi, Lisa. Um, and hi, Yo. Good to see you too. Um, so, nice to see everyone uh, tuning in. So, just remember, guys, the most important thing is as long as your, uh, your implementation of whatever your mark is, 
Okay, so whether your mark is that click or it's a verbal mark, some people call it a bridge. I don't want to get too technical with you guys. I'm just trying to keep it nice and simple so everyone kind of understands where we're going from. Now, the way that uh, I use markers in my training, so I've got multiple markers, okay? I have what we call a negative mark. So a negative mark just lets my dog know that what he's doing is not going to lead to a reward, okay? So it's not a, 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 you know, a punishment as such or anything along those lines. It's just guiding him and letting him know that what he is doing is not going to end up in a reward. So for anyone that's ever played the game of hot and cold, you know, and you're, you're, you're playing a game maybe with your parents when you're younger, and they say you're getting warmer, warmer, and then maybe you turn the wrong way, and they go, no, you're getting colder, that colder is a negative mark. And what it can do is just kind of get you back on track. So uh, you could also look at it, it's a little bit like uh, your GPS. If it sits there and it says perform a U-turn, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a punishment. It's just getting you back on track. So that's what I call a negative mark, okay? It's just letting your dogs go, nope, that's not what we're after. And that's kind of the, the, the voice that I use as well. It's just, nope, and that's kind of it. So it just gets my dog going, okay, cool. So I won't do that, that particular behavior anymore. Let's say hypothetically uh, he's doing a high five and that's not what I'm after. Nope. So he goes, cool. It's got nothing to do with my paw. It's not the high five and you can move on to another um another exercise or I'll start demonstrating some other behaviors for me. Um, the next one is uh, another, if you would, it's also a release word. Um, so it's an active release. Um, I've also referred to it previously as neutral. Um, and most commonly it's the word free. So some people use the word free, break, um, party. I know Sarah who trains with us has the awesome word of Vegas for her dog Cheezle. Basically, once our dog understands uh, what the release word is. So if we're teaching a dog a sit, uh, we don't need to say stay. Okay, you don't want to get into the habit of going stay, stay, because it just goes on and on and on. Once our dog understands the sit, we just say free, and then we can re release, oh, that's the release word, and then we can reward our dogs. Thanks for all the love hearts there, guys. Really appreciate it. It's nice, uh, nice to know that uh, you guys are interacting with me. Um, so once our dog has um, comprehension of what the release word means, it means that they know that they can come out of the position, that's when I start to move uh, that particular mark into an intermittent schedule of reinforcement. Okay, All that means is sometimes you'll get a reward and sometimes you won't. Okay, So um, it may be, and as an example, if I have the dogs in the back of my car, so it's a ute with a canopy, so my dogs are in the back of the car, and I want Zuka to come out, I'll say free. It means he's allowed to come out of the car, which in itself is a reward, but I'm not going to give any kind of bonuses on top of it. Just because he got out of the car, I'm not going to use food to reward him. Now he can come out, you know, and, and we might do a training session or he can just come out and sniff, be a dog and have, have a great time. But there might be other times where I'll sit there and uh, if he's done something really quite nicely in his obedience, I might use that free and go, yeah, that was pretty good. So I can reward that as well. So that's your intermittent schedule of reinforcement. Sometimes you do get a reward and sometimes you won't. Um, without going too deep into it, this is where our dogs can really start to push and drive with their obedience. Um, as, a, as a quick little example, it's, it's like if you would when you're a kid and you're learning to shoot hoops, so the basketball... Sometimes you miss, but sometimes you get it. And those times that you get it will push you even more because you really want to get it again and again, and you miss and you miss, you go, come on. And the minute you get that hoop, you're like, yes, got it. And you can have, you know, uh, there's a lot of endorphins, endorphins that uh, set in. There's a whole lot of stuff that goes with it that increases the drive and, and the expectancy from our dogs. So that works really, really well. Um, so we've gone through what we call our negative mark. We've gone through what uh, we've called our active, or sometimes I've referred to it as our neutral mark. Um, once our dog has an understanding of it, so the free word, as I gave an example, once our dog have an understanding of it, we move into the intermittent schedule of reinforcement. The next, uh, next uh, mark that I use is what we call a continuation marker. So if I give my dog a continuation mark, it just means keep doing what you're doing, buddy. I love it. Keep going. Okay. So mine's nice and simple. I just say good. So if my dog here is good, it means keep doing it, buddy. So if he's holding a, a, a drop or a down stay, if he hears good, he's like, right, I'm on track. I'm doing the right thing. Mum's really impressed with this. 
and then after that I will give him more instruction. So my continuation marker is good. Now, just to make sure that you guys aren't getting confused, I know that some people use a clicker for their continuation. Again, guys, it doesn't matter provided your dog has an understanding of the expectation. So if you wanted to, you could continue just to click and keep your, your dog, you know, as long as he's conditioned, so you get him into a position, you can keep clicking if you like. So means keep doing what you're doing. I personally prefer to use the word good. Okay, so again, guys, it doesn't matter. It's your dog's understanding. Thank you very much for the love heart. Guys, um, let me know. How's this going? Is Are you understanding what I'm saying? Is there comprehension with it? Because I know sometimes it can get a little bit tricky. So, hey, Mercedes, good to see you. Beautiful. All right. So we've gone through our negative mark. Again, it's just, nope, what you're doing isn't quite on, on, on track. We have our active, or as I've referred to it previously, um, our neutral, okay? It's free. Sometimes you get the rewards, sometimes you won't. Uh, so that's on the intermittent schedule of reinforcement. My continuation marker. Nice to see the love, guys. It's awesome. Thank you very much. Continuation marker. Good. Okay? Just means keep doing what, you you keep doing what you're doing, okay? Because the reward is coming. And then from there, guys, we have what I refer to as our positive mark. So a, a positive mark for me, when I'm saying positive, it means that absolutely guaranteed, if you hear me say yes, I will reward you. I will, I will actively give you something to reinforce the behavior, okay? Now, again, when we talk about reinforcement, it totally depends on what your dog sees as that. There would be no point in giving a, a, a non-ball motivated dog a ball for the, as a reward if it doesn't like the ball, Okay. So it could be a ball, it could be a game of tug, um, and, and it could be food. Obviously, food is, is, is one of the most common ones for, um, for people to use. Thanks, Lauren. I, I see you. Yes, there. That's awesome. So I always sit there and say, if I say yes, I must reward my dog. That is a contract that I have with him. He knows absolutely every single time if I say yes, he, he can come and get his reward, okay, regardless of, as I said, ball, tug, or food. Now, um, one of the things that I, I just want to cover off with you, again, just to clarify, it doesn't really matter whether you're using your mark as your, as, as your positive, or sorry, it doesn't matter if you're using your click as your positive mark or you're using a verbal. At the end of the day, it's your dog's understanding of it. Paul, I can see here intermittent schedules, continuous click, positive, negative. Uh, spot on, buddy. <laughs> awesome. Um, so... At the end of it, what we want to be able to do is have our dog understand that with, with, um, with our positive release, so for me it's a yes, it means that my dog can move out of position and come and get his reward. Okay, Because I have set up a contract with him that every time I say yes, he can come and get his reward, it is the end of the exercise. Okay, If Zuka, so I'm working backwards here, if Zuka hears the word good, it means keep doing what you're doing. It doesn't mean he can come out of position. It doesn't mean that he can look at me to get a reward, and it doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to go to him and give him a reward. It means keep doing what you're doing, buddy. I love it. You're on track. Okay? Um, then we, we're moving to our active or our neutral. Okay? Free. That's your intermittent schedule of reinforcement. This is obviously we move to intermittent schedule once the dog understands what it is. So my dog, he's free. He is allowed to move from position. There may be a reward. There may not. And when I say, uh, no. Nope, so that's your negative mark. It's like, buddy, nice try, but it's not what I'm after. Okay, so hopefully this is making sense to you guys as to how we uh, use our marks or our, um, our release words in our training. I'm just having a look here through the comments. Hey, Ellie, thank you. I'm glad you're enjoying the episode. Just making sure I haven't missed any comments here. Thanks for the love and the thumbs up, guys. It always is uh, nice to have you interacting with me. Cool, cool. All right. Uh, is the way, Ali's just sent through a question, is the way you teach yes and free to start off with the same way but changes as you go to intermittent schedule? Um, yeah, so um, absolutely. Um, I would sit there and say that to start off with so the dog actually understands um, the free, I would encourage my dog out of the position always. But I very quickly move to the intermittent schedule of, of, of reinforcement. So obviously if you just say free and your dog has no idea what's going on, you want to be able to teach that position as well. But if I say yes, 
it doesn't matter from the very get-go absolutely I reward my dog straight away so hopefully that makes sense uh, hi Marilyn thanks for joining in um, there is another mark that we use guys now I would be referring or steering this more to uh, guys with at least intermediate obedience okay so please try not to get overwhelmed with it all hopefully you guys have kind of written it down I know that Paul uh, Paul's made a, a quick little note above um, of the breakdown of what we've done so if I'm talking about my positive mark that's my yes every single time I will re reinforce and reward my dog we also have what we call external rewards okay so if I say yes to my dog come to me and there'll be a reward or the reward is coming from me if I use an external reward for example get it it means my dog can go out and get a reward externally okay so as an example if I have my dog in front of me in a drop position or a down okay and let's say I put a ball because for Zuka a ball is pretty high value and I put a ball let's say two meters out to the side of him and and I might have a ball with me as well depending on which release I use which mark I use will let him know in which direction to get his reward if I say get it he will shoot up to the side and get the ball that's on the ground if I say yes he'll come flying at me and get the ball off me okay or I might throw it but it is coming from me so hopefully that makes sense so we have rewards that come from us personally and then we have our external rewards as well so just to cl clarify if you're only just starting to work with with markers or clickers I probably wouldn't use an external reward just yet timing as I know a few of you have mentioned previously um, just bear with me one second timing is really important with that um, so a lot of the time to be able to get that timing down pat get it right don't overwhelm yourself guys and that's why I personally don't use a clicker it just gets a little bit too much you've got food and leads and dogs going everywhere you end up with 50 shades of dog as they you know tying you up with their lead and all of that type of thing so I sit there and go simpler simplify it for yourself as long as you are classically conditioning your dog to the understanding of whatever your mark is be it a clicker be it you know your verbal as long as they understand it and you're nice and clear with it that's the easiest way to, to work through it the other thing before you introduce an external reward is to make sure that your dog can maintain the position okay you don't want to pop an external reward out out to the side of your dog again if they're in that drop or down position and if you put an external reward out you don't want your dog breaking position and rewarding themselves by going out and getting the, the ball that is kind of an oxymoron when it comes to, to working with our dogs obedience and you may need to teach that as well to start off with because the first time you say get it if the history has always taught them that coming to you to get the reward all right so dogs out in a, in a drop down state you've got the ball out to the side for them and you've got a ball with you perhaps probably wouldn't do it to start off with but if you say get it and they come to you I would still reward if you if you give them a mark and that's part of that contractual agreement that you have with them reward um, I always sit there and say and there's a small little swear coming up if you click for shit that's your problem okay don't blame your dog if you've clicked for shit okay that's the contract that you have with your dog so if you hit that clicker or if you say yes and you're like oh why did I do that that's your bad still reward your dog okay you don't want to go down the path of uh, extinction training where your dog doesn't see the value in that mark anymore okay your mark your positive mark so your yes you always want to have value in that okay so guys hopefully that makes sense I can see a few little uh, <laughs> 50 shades of dog you like that one do you thanks Laura and I uh, particularly when you're working with puppies and uh, they like tying you up so anyway it's a bit of fun there so another one of my quirky little analogies all right guys I'm just going through here and having a look Rebecca I haven't been using a negative uh, been using negative markers but I will start makes uh, so much more sense which is awesome and move the dog in the right direction absolutely it works really well whether you're um, shaping free shaping if you can just give them that little bit of guidance it just helps them um, and again it's just that it's like a GPS you know if you go off track it's just saying hey buddy not quite what we're after you haven't done anything that's wrong per se it's just hey come on move, move to your, your right or your left a little bit more or perhaps 
instead of using your paws, you know, maybe I'm on a nose target or whatever it is. So negative marks certainly can uh, clarify things so much easier for your dog. So um, again, just to clarify, it's not, you know, implemented as a as a no or a ah or anything along those lines. It's just no. Nope. It's like um, I know people that go, uh oh, all of those types of things. Um, I like short, sweet, nope. And I just wait for the dog to start to, to move toward the behavior that I like. So that's cool. Hopefully uh, that'll start working out for you, Rebecca. Um, so Lauren, you need more goods. Absolutely. Make sure that you're not, if you're using those continuation markers, which is letting your dog know that they're doing the right thing, you don't want your dog to be dependent on it. Okay, so just be careful of that. You don't want to be one of those people that uh, unfortunately would have to just keep talking and talking and talking uh, to keep their dog in position. That would look along the lines of, as an example, sit. Good, 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 and just goes on and on. So it's just that little bit of feedback, okay, letting your dog know, yep, you're on track, bud, keep going. So that's awesome. Just make sure you don't get hung up on on giving that you know you know 24 hour kind of feedback if you would um hello hello <laughs> hey john how are you there's your shout out <laughs> lisa what is the difference between a neutral and an external great question all right so the neutral is your um your free Okay, so when you're working with Astro and you say free, so that free comes under intermittent schedule of reinforcement. Okay, sometimes you will, sometimes you won't get that reward. An external release would be if you had Astro, and I know you've been working on the heel, if you had Astro in the heel position and further out to your left, let's say two meters to your left, you had a ball on the ground or food on the ground, whatever it is, as long as it's a reward according to Astro, and you would say get it, which means he can break from heel position and shoot it to the left to get the reward. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. If you can give me some feedback on that one for me, Lisa. So just to clarify, um, the neutral or the active release, so that's your free intermittent schedule of reinforcement. You may get a reward, you may not. Exter <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> An external reward is having your dog go out to get that reward. So the dog is moving away from you. Excuse me, I'm just gonna have a drink. I'm gonna cough away in a sec. <laughs> okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Diamond, fantastic video so far, thank you very much. It's also a lot of fun to use the yes marker um, for assistance skills, absolutely. Um, assistance skills, you know, tricks, all of those things, you know, using a mark. And again, guys, don't get hung up whether you're using a verbal or a click as long as your timing's right. You know, some people will sit there and say, you know, but there's no emotion in a click. But, you know, for me personally, I'm quite a vibrant, bubbly person. And I find the yes is just easy. And I'm actually in more control. It's just personally, I feel like I'm in more control verbally opposed to holding a clicker and holding a lead and doing this and doing that and not having to think about other things. So... Guys, it's just a personal preference. Don't get hung up. If it works for you, it's good. If your dog's having fun, that's the aim of training. Um, there's nothing more rewarding than seeing a dog um, love working out each step to get closer to the end result. Absolutely. Hi, Mary. I've heard that once you condition the mark, for example, the yes, that the mark can be the reward in itself and you don't need to always follow with, a, with food or a toy reward. Can you please explain this more? Okay. So when it comes to... Um, using your your positive mark, so your yes. Um, the dogs, if it's classically conditioned, okay, that means the dog absolutely understands that uh, the the yes means that there's food. The dog would have already had that uh, endorphin rush, and would have already been. Uh, it's it's the anticipation of the reward that is often more rewarding than the reward. Okay, now this gets, starts to get a little bit tricky to comprehend. But if you can imagine, uh, for example, if you're a kid and your parents say, come on, we'll go to Macca's, assuming that you like it, okay? The excitement of actually getting there, a lot of the time is, hap you know, you can be, you will enjoy that more than actually having your happy meal or whatever would be burger that you're holding in your mouth. It's the anticipation a lot of the time that is more rewarding than the reward itself. So, yes. You can 
uh, there's certainly arguments and there's truth to the fact that um, the mark itself uh, can be the reward. But the catch with it, if you keep, uh, if you just keep using that mark and you're not conditioned or you're not repeating the, the reward afterwards or the reward is, doesn't come, it falls into extinction training. Okay, eventually your dog will go, well, that word doesn't work anymore. I'm not going to work for it. Okay, so if you, if you say yes on multiple times without a reward, your dog will stop playing the game because the rules have changed. So hopefully uh, that makes sense, Mary. I know there are, um, you know, there are some people that uh, will sit there and, and, and I personally, if I say yes, I'll always reward my dog. Okay. But, you know, every now and again you might get caught out and you say the word just out of habit. We are human guys and, and if you can't admit that, well, you've got some other things to kind of work on there. You're human, we make mistakes. If you say yes and there's, you don't have the food or the ball or something like that, it's not going to ruin all of your training. Okay, you just don't want to fall into the habit where you get extinction training. So, Mary, hopefully that makes sense to you uh, in regards to that. Hey, Karina. Uh, what would you make... Sorry, what would make you choose to use an external reward? Um, it's just fun for the dog. Thanks for the love hearts, guys. It's fun for the for the dogs. And also, why not? Let the dog start to process a little bit more information. Yes means you can come and get a ball from me. Or get it, you can go and get the ball out there as well. So it's just a little bit more fun. I know uh, some people that might be doing uh, particular dog sports... You know, they'll, they may sit there and have uh, different rewards. So, for example, if they need to go out to the decoy or come back to them, that can certainly uh, work in and around that. Um, so I think the more we can teach our dog, as long as they're having great fun doing it, you know, why not? So, you know, I don't work with IPO or any of those kind of dog sports. Um, our dear friend Forrest Mickey, he was the one that, you know, uh, first introduced us to sending the dog out to an external reward for the decoy. So... It's certainly, um, you can see the dogs having good fun where they can sit there and they, they hear that release. So whether it's a yes or get it, and they're like, oh, I know which way I need to come and get the reward. So um, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, Lisa, that made sense. That's awesome. Uh, Ali, I'm the same when it comes to the clicker. I find I become flat, therefore my dogs become flat. Um, when I say yes, I become more alive and involved in the training. Absolutely. You know, again, don't get hung up on it, guys. It's at the end of the day, if training is fun, that's the bottom line, you know. And I know there are many, many trainers uh, that will sit there and prefer a click, as I said, because it doesn't have that emotion in it. Uh, I just sit there and, and I prefer the yes. And it depends on your dog. Some dogs might go super crazy excited if you have a verbal mark. You know, it may just be too much for them. Um, so the clicker may be better. <laughs> Bloody Pavlov. It is Pavlov's uh, conditioning. Well explained, says Deck. Thank you very much. Uh, like a piggy bank, the bigger the bank balance allows a few with exactly a, a few withdrawals. If there's no food, uh, no toy until the piggy bank is empty or negative. Absolutely. Um, you know, if your if your piggy bank is empty, you're not going to continue to go there and check it. You're just going to give up. That's a great analogy too. Lauren, your Kelpie Charlie gets really enthusiastic sometimes, and he beats beats you to the trick. He'll do something before I've even asked him to do it. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I guess it depends on what it is that you're wanting him to do, my dear. Um, if he has an understanding of what you're about to ask uh, ask him, um, we're kind of going down a different path here. But if he's starting to preempt and he starts to volunteer um, the behavior and the trick, you may want to sit there and, and uh, you know, I wouldn't necessarily be rewarding just the sheer fact that he's volunteered the behavior. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it just it kind of depends on what it is that you're working on in regards to that, but that's what happens when you have a, sm a smart dog. I always uh, nickname Kelpies along with uh, a few select other breeds. It's like having Einstein with an amphetamine problem. Super duper smart and a truckload of energy. So, guys, hopefully that's made sense to you. So I'll just quickly go over the marks again. We have our negative mark, which we use no. We have our active or what I've referred to as a neutral mark, which is your free, which falls under an intermittent schedule of reinforcement. We have our positive mark, which I use a yes. And then we've also got our external. So if our dog's holding a position, we can say, get it, and they can move out to get a reward. You can use a clicker for any one of these phases, even for a no. Okay, you could go, and that means no to your dog. Okay, it depends on how they're conditioned. If they heard this and a reward never, ever followed it, it would be a negative mark. 
it's just a clicker, guys. The word yes is just yes. Good is good. Um, so, guys, don't don't get too overwhelmed with it. Um, and obviously, as I said before, then a continuation mark, which I use the word good. Guys, hopefully you've got something out of this evening. Um, please, if you have any questions, that's what the comment box is for. So you're welcome to uh, pop your comments down there. And if you have any other things that you'd like us to go through on K9 TV, again, just uh, shoot them through, pop them in the comment box. Feel free to share. Um, we do share our K9 TV episodes on our YouTube channel as well. So make sure you're, you're following us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we'll see you next time. See ya!